Excuse me while I whip this thing out. It's N64 time. All right, so I've got, let me get my lights on here so you can see a little bit better. Um, I've got a um, new HDMI kit for the N64 and this thing actually does look pretty interesting um, given the features and price point, especially compared to some of the older kits. Uh, but you get this little ribbon cable here, gets soldered up against the RCP, I'm forgetting the name, whatever, it gets soldered up against that um, chip in the N64, same as the other kits, um, with how the N64 is constructed and how you need access to those digital signal lines. I don't know that there's ever going to be a drop-in upgrade for HDMI or anything, at least nothing that doesn't just take whatever comes out of the multi out and convert that. Uh, but anyway, that's probably not the interesting part. I don't know that these all come with this, um, but I did go ahead and get this from Retro Game Repair Shop. They sent me a few extra goodies, I believe. Uh, but if you order one of these, this is probably what you're getting. The contents of this bag and this ribbon here. Like I said, I've got a few extra goodies. So we've got the uh, actual mod board itself, which uses a mini HDMI, not a micro, not a full size. Um, it does come with a mini HDMI to full size HDMI converter, but I just happen to have a standalone mini HDMI cable, so that's what I'm going to be using. Uh, but there is functionally no difference if you wanted to use one of these bad boys. Uh, but otherwise, that's pretty much it. You get the board with a little piece of adhesive already attached to it, and you get the ribbon and the adapter. And uh, we're going to go ahead and install it. Um, ideally, you want to start with a N64 that you know works. I don't know that this one works. I assume it works. I was told it worked. I plugged it in. I made sure it worked. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, relatively easy to take apart, uh, though you probably already know that if you've seen any of the other videos on these or similar kits. That being said, there are a whole bunch of screws. Um, this kit out of the box should be compatible with North American, uh, US models and Japanese models. Um, the only difference between US and Japanese models, aside from the stickers on the console and the power brick that it comes with, um, this bad boy says, oh, there it is. It says it only takes 100 volts in, but I have it plugged into my wall and I haven't had any issues yet. Um, I'm in the US where we have either 110 or 120, I don't know, um, but it's still over the recommended input. Um, I don't know, it seems fine. If it makes you uncomfortable, then probably track down a power supply for your region, but otherwise they're all the same. Uh, while we're in here, I'm going to do a real quick mod to the cart slot. Uh, also provided to me by RGRS. Unfortunately, mine was damaged in the post, but I did glue it back together. Uh, they sent me a new cartridge tray. There's nothing really wrong with the original, except that I grab my sample here. Japanese carts and US carts, the only difference is the physical key on the bottom, and that's what locks them out of the different consoles. So my Japanese cart fits perfectly in the cart slot that this thing came with, because it's a Japanese console. But my US cart, because the keys are on the edge instead of in the middle, doesn't fit. So we're going to replace it with a slot here that has no keys. And then I should be able to use both carts in the same console. If you have like an EverDrive or whatever, um, 
those are already region free you don't need a mod for that the casing itself is just different it doesn't have or I guess it has both keys Uh, if you're in a European region, or PAL region rather, and you have a uh, 50 FPS console instead of a 60 FPS console, I don't know that this mod is compatible, um, at least not without converting your console first. But now that fits, and that fits. Ta-da! Easy peasy. We'll set that aside. Uh, I don't know if RGRS is selling these. If so, I'll go ahead and throw a link. Um, We'll, we'll figure something out. Um, check the description for more info on this. But otherwise, we're done with that. Now we need to move on to the rest of the console here. Helps if we have the right bit, huh? Eh? There are about 8 million screws. Um... I suppose we don't actually need to take the console out of the housing to get this installed. To get it installed properly, it goes underneath the port, which will need the console out of the way for that. But technically, you could just pop the heat sink off and solder while it's in the case. I, I never recommend soldering while the console's in the case. Um, too easy to melt the plastic by accident. Okay. I'm confusing myself. I forgot the two cart slot screws were longer. I think we just need these two, maybe? And then the two inside the... slot here. I forgot these. And it comes right out. I'm going to set this aside for now. We will have to modify this to get the HDMI board in here. Actually, let's double check. Okay, so there are apparently several different revisions of this housing. Uh, some of them have thicker screw posts back here. Mine is not that version, so my board just fits right in. Um, if you do have that version, you need to trim out all three of these screw posts. Well, you don't need to trim them out entirely. You just need to slim them down so that the board fits around them. I don't know why they didn't just fix the uh, board layout. Um, if we look at something like not that, that has customer information on it, so does that. There we go. If we look at the Ultra HDMI, uh, you can see the, the cutouts are a little bit, a little bit bigger, a little bit, but otherwise it's designed to take a slightly different shape. The trim itself looks like it's going to be about the same for the HDMI port, so maybe those no cut mods should work for this. I don't have any of the uh, no cuts handy. Um, but since this mod doesn't have the optional RGB output that the Ultra HDMI does, I think no cut should be just fine. Alright. Get these put away. Alright, 
right, so now that I know that fits, and my install is going to be relatively easy, I'm feeling a little bit better about this. That was a silly place to put that. All right, I think I need to remove the rest of these screws now. I know you can just remove these two black ones, pull the shields up, and then just like schlonk this whole thing off. Um, but in my personal opinion, it's a lot easier to just leave the heat sinks attached to the chips and then pull the big heat sink off the little heat sinks. And then you just work around the little heat sinks. They're not that big. N64s can overheat as well, so you want to make sure if you're doing any testing that you at least leave the little ones on. The big one can come off. Alright, and then the big one just comes off just like that. Set it aside, then we have more shielding and we're left with just the little heat sinks. I'm gonna pull the shielding off the bottom too just so I don't um, just so that doesn't fall off later I'll try and catch it cut myself on it or something I don't know uh, but either way there's your three little heat sinks they're attached to their respective chips with um, some thermal pads they're not rigidly on there so you can and I jiggle these around if you want. I don't know why you'd want to, but you can. Um, you don't need to remove them, just leave them in place. Everything will be fine without. Um, but next, we want to take this ribbon here and this gets soldered up to the legs of this chip right here. And follow the listing for instructions here, but the first pin on the left here, it's even marked on the ribbon. How nice is that? I still don't know how this autofocus works. Or I guess it doesn't. Okay. Okay, well, either way, you get the idea. Um, pin six over here, pin 25 over here. The dot on the motherboard is pin five, so you just want the pin right next to the dot. And forgive me if I don't quite get this in frame. tack down both sides of this thing. I'm gonna come back with a little bit of flux. Get a little bit more solder on my iron and uh, That should be it. I have very little confidence in what I just did though. So I'm going to go over it again.
Maybe I should have left it. I have shorts that I'm having a hard time clearing. Now. Uh, actually, now that I look at that from straight on, looks fine. Can we go that high? Eh, not really. Doesn't look properly aligned though. Hopefully it's close enough. All right, next bit of wiring, we're gonna wanna take this top little stringy bit. This gets wired up to the bottom of this five volt regulator right here. Gonna tin that with a little bit of extra solder here. I'm gonna try and find my tweezers. There, there. Just like that, and then the last one goes. on the PIF chip right down here, and we get the second to last pin. So pin 16, it looks like, on the bottom. Be very careful that not only do you not short that, but you also don't destroy this button here. And just like that, we're all set. All went well, we should be done. Or very nearly at the very at least. Uh, yeah, looks good. Uh, guess I'm gonna go ahead and start reassembling the shielding. Just so I can give this a proper test. if we need to do that. Let me check the images. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. Cool, cool, cool. Um, at this point, let's go ahead and test it. Your console will not power on without the jumper pack. So at the very least, we've got to do this or pull the jumper pack out of the shell. But this is easy. Fairly certain this goes pins down, but we'll find out in just a moment.
get my video capture up. And... Hey! It's working! Excellent! Cool. Now I feel a little bit more comfortable finishing this install. set this aside. We don't need it for the time being. I want to get this trimmed to fit this USB port. Or um, HDMI, whatever. You know what I mean. Um, easiest way, I think, to get the spacing right on this is to literally just drop it in. And then I'm going to score the housing with my tweezers right where that port is and then I'm just gonna come back and uh, file it out with, um, with these bad boys but I'm gonna not do it at my workspace because this makes a lot of dust so I'm gonna do this off camera and I will come back once we're, uh, once we're all set one of these bad boys and the idea is literally just to come in here with my file and smaller is better you can always remove more material later um, and if this is anything like the ultra HDMI the plug itself is sort of kind of held in with the plastic so for a stronger port you want to make sure that it's a snug fit but otherwise should be relatively straightforward so i'm gonna go get this cut out and i'll be right back all right i believe i've got this just about finished up um like i said just a lot of um trial and error you'll get it to fit eventually I accidentally took out just a little bit too much, but it's fine. You, you don't see this part. It's okay. Um, so yeah, now I think we're just left to reassemble this thing. This just drops in here. Uh, I guess we can peel the paper off the foam so that we can uh, get this thing stuck down and it's not going anywhere. But otherwise, that's pretty much it. Get pins down here. like that. Where do we want to start? I know that one has two long screws. Of 
believe I cross-threaded that one by accident. But because it's just metal into plastic, I guess it's not that big of a deal, as long as I don't need to go in here eight million times. I suppose I should put the rest of the heat sinks on too, so I don't end up having to pull these screws out. Uh, heat sinks, shielding, whatever. You know what I mean. Leave the black screws go in these ones. Long screws go in here. And the screws with the metal washer go there. Seems kind of weird to just pinch this ribbon between the two shieldings. Um, I don't anticipate it's going to cause any issues, but it, it doesn't feel right. Something about that feels weird. Uh, I like the Ultra HDMI approach where the ribbon comes out, the actual opening in the shielding. Is that an opening back there? That's not... I could have sworn there was an opening. Never mind, I'm full of shit. slot. Power set to off. And it's probably bad juju to uh, keep assembling, but oh well. to test the G's list thing. Well, I guess I did test it. Not that big of a deal. I wasn't recording, but you'll have to take my word for it.
that's it. All done. Easy peasy. HDMI goes in here. Power goes in here. Gonna get the uh, trusty Nico pad. I just tied one of the worst knots I've ever seen into the cord. Well, I suppose it's not that bad because it's still loose. It's working. What is the shortcut? Start A B. Hexed. All right. So if you hold Start A and B, we should get no SD. There we go. not making my life easier. Let me get the uh, OEM N64 controller in here. Okay, start A and B. Oh yeah, there we go. It just works with the C stick. So we can do three different video modes, mild, standard, and dynamic. I don't know what specifically the difference is between the two, but from where I'm sitting, dynamic looks a little too dark. Mild looks a little too bright, so I guess standard is probably what I would leave it on, at least with this specific setup. Uh, color modes are those useless color palette filter override things that one chip likes putting in all of their stuff. I don't anticipate ever using these for any reason whatsoever. Um, and then we have the three aspect ratio settings. So one is going to be the default. I, again, I'm not 100% sure what this is, but I'm fairly certain this is a one-to-one -one scaling mode. Uh, so even though it's outputting a widescreen 720p signal, we're still getting the four by three aspect ratio that the N64 should be outputting. Um, I don't know if this is scaled. If it is, it might just be a simple 2x integer scale or 1x integer scale. I'm not sure. Uh, then we have a stretch to uh, 16 by 9. I'm not 100% sure what the difference between these last two is, but I'm going to guess that number two is an integer scale mostly. Um, it's probably a relatively even number, whereas number three is probably not even scaling and is probably just stretching it as big as it goes, or at least as big as they can make it. Otherwise, that's it. That's, that's all you get. You don't get any extra features. You don't get any... Um, people call them scan lines, but they're not really scan lines. That's a CRT thing. Um, but on some of the other kits, I have seen uh, CRT filters. Um, so it'll emulate like the, the slot mask or, or phosphor pattern that certain CRTs have. This doesn't have any of that. I know that's a thing for retro tinks, so I suppose you could get one of these bad boys and then spend $600 on a retro tink 4K and then plug this into that to get your filters and upscaling beyond 720p, but Eh, I don't know. Um, you, don't, you don't get a whole lot as far as settings go. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. As long as it just works out of the box, I suppose that's not really an issue. But if you're expecting that sort of thing, well, it's not present here. You have to spend a little bit more money on one of the more expensive kits. Um, 
I have an Ultra HDMI in my other N64. I'm happy with that. It does a really good job for what it is. I know it's gotten um, flack before for not having easy update firmware, but if you have an EverDrive or whatever, you just throw the ROM on the EverDrive and then you can update it through that. It, it is really easy. And at the same time, Ultra HDMI has been out, I want to say since like 2015 or 2016 or something like that. It's got years of firmware behind it. There isn't much left to update it. Like, it, it just kind of just works. Um, it, does, it definitely has more features. I think the Ultra HDMI, aside from having uh, component out support, uh, I believe it also does up to 1080i, whereas this thing only does 720p. Um, for something like an N64 where some of your footage is already going to be interlaced. I suppose having 1080i is actually a pretty decent thing. I don't know offhand what games are interlaced, but... I mean, it's from the era, so I assume a lot are. Uh, it wasn't until, like, GameCube and later that we started getting Progressive Scan uh, supported and more things. Um, but that's that's just how it was. CRTs worked better with interlaced footage than they did with progressive footage, so most footage was interlaced. Modern displays handle progressive footage significantly better than they do interlaced footage. So I guess it's nice having the option. Um, looking at this capture footage, though, I'm, I'm playing through the capture card, so forgive me if my playing is quite terrible. Um, I'm not good at this game to begin with, and when you add in the extra <laughs> latency of the capture footage, it's probably not going too well. Actually, I'm honestly not doing that bad, all things considered. Um, it, it looks fine. This is totally usable. I don't think there's a single issue with this. Now, I, I don't have audio. Um, I can see that it is being recorded, so I'll have to review that after the fact. Hopefully all is well, but I, I, I don't anticipate any issues. Um, which I guess brings us to the elephant in the room. This mod kit is like 50 bucks. The alternative mod kits for N64, um, there was one briefly from Gamebox Systems. Um, unfortunately, I think that's been discontinued what with Postman's passing. Um, there's also the, the Pixel FX one. I have not tried that one out, uh, but it is my understanding that that thing was like a couple hundred bucks all said and done. Um, and then there was the Ultra HDMI, which was also about a couple hundred bucks all said and done. And I think RGRS has them for a little bit more than that right now, but... Um, You know, uh, availability. Sorry, I'm focusing on the game. I want to win. Um, but, you know, um, with supply low and demand high, of course, the price went up on those. Uh, so compared to the Ultra HDMI, I think that one's the best kit that you can get for an N64. This is totally usable. Um... So I, I guess it comes down to if you're fine with the 720p output and all of the default settings, even having your screen stretched, which to be honest, I probably wouldn't play with this stretched. I would probably play at the original aspect ratio, but for the purpose of the capture, I'm playing at the stretched aspect ratio. Um, honestly, it's fine. It's pretty decent. I am not currently equipped to do any lag testing, um, especially through HDMI, but it would be interesting to see if there is any additional lag with something like this over something like an Ultra HDMI. Um, depending on what specifically you're doing it, you know, that might be important. Um, but that being said, if you want the least latency on your display output, just use the original analog one. 
Sure, it's not going to look as good, but it's an N64. It doesn't look good anyway. Uh, these HDMI kits don't do anything to upscale. Um, like, it, you're still running original graphics off of original hardware. The only real difference is it's taking your pixels and arranging them in a format that works better with your HDTV. Uh, so in some cases that comes with nearest neighbor scaling, in some cases that comes with bilinear scaling. Um, but either way, it's still effectively the original N64 output. If you want upscaling or something to be rendered in a higher resolution, N64 is not going to do it. You'll have to look into emulation at that point. But honestly, this is this is fine. Um, for what it is, it's totally fine. Let's try another game here. This is what, Pokemon Stadium 2 or 3 or whatever? Uh, the Japanese version? I don't know what it's actually telling me, but this one you can tell is interlaced. Just an example of what that footage looks like interlaced. I wonder if this will work with my US game. Probably not. Yeah, I don't know what that says, but it's probably not working. That's okay. I've never drive. I just don't know if I have the ROM on it. Let's see how this works. Okay, so this game must be Pokemon Stadium 3 because the Japanese releases are one higher than the US releases. I never had Pokemon Stadium 2, the original one at least. I only had the first Pokemon Stadium. Ah! Well, the problem is that it's not reading my um, transfer pack. Go figure. I'll have to look into that at some other point, but... Oh well. That's a shame. I certainly didn't find the uh, cleanest example. Can we do battle now? Do one player. Should probably put it on easy so that it way, you know, it's a fair fight for me. Uh, eh, I see, I see, I see. I haven't played this in ages. That's pretty neat. Ah, oh, let's use flame wheel. Yeah, I'm not going to make you watch, sit through this whole battle. Um, I think you get the idea at this point. So, there you go. Um, honestly, this is really not that bad. Uh, given the, the price to performance that you get out of it, like it, it is all that you'd need to plug an N64 into an HDTV. 
Uh, you can let the TV's scaler take over from there. Most HD TVs handle digital scaling a lot better than they do handle analog scaling. Um, that, and this is probably still going to be higher quality than uh, a composite uh, output. In Nintendo's infinite wisdom, these things did not support component out of the box, but you could modify them to support component. Whatever. Look at that. That text is perfectly, totally legible. Everything looks great. Happy shiny. I don't know. I'm into it. Um, the, the price is right. And the, now that these things are out there, I guess it's, that's kind of it. Um, yeah, if you want one, I, I guess I, I do recommend it. Uh, just like I said, you know, it is missing some extra features compared to some of the other, um, HDMI mods out there for N64, but even though it's missing those features, it comes in at significantly lower price. So maybe that's not an issue. I don't know. Um, eventually, if, when, uh, the company who makes this thing decides to add more features, there are no updates. Um, if you buy this version as it is right now and you only get the, the three aspect ratio modes, the useless color filters, and then those three color modes, th those are the features you're stuck with. Um, let's say they come out in the future, they add some deinterlacing modes, they add uh, maybe some, some filters, um, useful filters, uh, like CRT slot mask emulators, stuff like that. Um, you'll have to buy a new kit. Like there's, there's no way to update this thing. They don't, they don't support that. This company doesn't support that. Um, hypothetically speaking, if you were to create your own firmware for whatever the hell Go-In chip is in here, um, you could update it yourself, but they don't release their firmware. They don't release any updates for their firmware. Uh, the source is closed, so you'd effectively be developing a whole new mod at that point. But if you want to, you can, I guess. Um, to my knowledge, there is no readout uh, support on these FPGAs, so um, the firmware's already written, you can't dump it. That's kind of it. Uh, I could be wrong, I'm not an FPGA guy yet. Um, but yeah, I honestly, for what you get, it's fine. Uh, I wish they would have put a little bit more effort into the fitment for some of the other model N64s. In my specific case, it was not an issue, but your mileage may vary. Um, I'd probably recommend taking apart the N64 in advance to double check that. I don't know if there are any markings on this thing to indicate what model um, housing it is. Um, I think it was kind of a mix and match. You know, you might get older models with the new housing and newer models with the older housing and so on just because they they kind of made them in batches. Um, I, I, I don't know. You'll have to talk to someone who's a little bit more proficient in N64 stuff on that. But otherwise, I've got links in the description. Um, I'll link to where you can grab one of these kits if you want. I'll link to my other video on the Ultra HDMI that I did. Um, in case you want to do some side-by-side, -side, I tested with the exact same two games. Um, otherwise, I think that's about it. Um, let's try one more game, huh? What should I try? Whatever I try, I'm just gonna embarrass myself. Castlevania. Only something like 300 games for the N64, and I genuinely don't like a lot of them. Dr. Mario. Oh, you know what? I like Extreme G. That game's fun.
I'm gonna grab a memory card for this thing at some point. Um, four layer tech is run by a couple friends of mine. They make a pretty decent memory card for N64. I'll link that in the description. At some point I'll grab one for myself, but that point is not today. Um, actually, I wonder if EverDrive supports memory card emulation. I could have sworn that was a feature of some flash cart, though maybe not for this console. I might be thinking of PS2. I don't even remember the controls for this. How do we go? Was it R? No, it's Z. Aha. I've only ever played this, but also on PlayStation. <laughs> Oh, and I suppose it's also worth reiterating. Um, I'm not even looking at the screen anymore. Um, the OSD on this kit, it's start A and B, works totally fine with an OEM controller. I was having trouble with my aftermarket controller, so if you need to access the OSD, plan on having an OEM controller around for that. But given the amount of settings in there, it's more or less just kind of set and forget and don't worry about. I don't really think it's that big of an issue, but I figured it's worth mentioning. Oh, I messed up. I got used to the rush controls. Yeah. All right, I'm going to end it here. Pretty decent stuff. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, seems to work really nice. Links in the description, and um, catch you all next time. Quick addendum. Um, while I was editing the footage together, I noticed that the captured audio is totally broken. I'm not 100% sure what the difference between these guys This is what it sounds like. Uh, I think it's an incompatibility with my capture card because... I've got this bad boy plugged into my Switch, into my TV. totally fine here, so...